What is going on everybody? Welcome to the video. So today I wanted to share with you guys some of the settings that I use when I shoot cinematic footage on my DJI Mini 2. Now these instructions will probably work for just about every DJI drone, but things will be a little bit differently just because every drone moves differently. So we're going to cover things like the on-screen or OSD type settings, as well as moving into things that are a little bit more technical, like the advanced gimbal rotation. We're going to cover all of that in today's video. So with that being said, let's go ahead and just jump right in. Getting right into this, we're out here on Utah Lake. There is a little bit of a wind, so I apologize if the mic is picking up the wind. Hopefully you guys can hear me over that well. Uh, but the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and enable some things on your OSD or your on-screen display. So if you go in to the top right-hand corner and tap the three little dots, you're gonna want to then tap on the camera tab. Yours may actually default over to safety. If you are on there, just tap on the camera tab over there on the top. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we, if we scroll down just a little bit, we're going to enable something called the histogram. And what this does is it gives you at a glance information about your exposure. So if we go ahead and toggle that switch on, you'll see that it pops up there over on the left hand side. You've got your shadows on the left with your highlights on the right and just gives you at a glance information to make sure that you're getting your exposure correct or at least balance. The next thing that I turn on is the overexposure warning. This of course is user preference. I do prefer to have it on, unlike the histogram where I think everybody should have that on, especially if you're shooting for a cinematic or anything like that. It has a good, um, it is designed to help you out with your exposure. So histogram, I definitely think everybody should have it on, but the exposure warning uh, is kind of user preference. But if you see, if we toggle that on, you'll see in the background here, if we overexpose something, you'll get some zebra striping or some black and white striping indicating areas of the frame that are overexposed. So again, this can be helpful if you're trying to expose on something specific and you wanna see what type of areas are either clipping or overexposing, that will give you that type of warning. Again, that's user preference. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back off just so we have a little bit of other stuff on here. The next things that I enable are grid lines. And what I'll do is I'll start with all of the grid lines turned on and then I will turn them off as I see fit. So scrolling down just a little bit further, I'll enable the diagonal grid lines, the rule of thirds, and the center point. If we go back out to the main screen, you can see that I have all of those on there. Having all of these on there is great for a beginner because A, if you're unfamiliar with the rule of thirds, you'll probably wanna do some research on what that exactly is because it does help with framing the shot. The diagonal helps you keep your images balanced if you're shooting like mountain ranges and things like that. Of course, the center point is the center of which your drone is facing. So having those on is definitely helpful. And like I said, I will turn those on and off depending on what type of scene that I'm shooting. Now the next thing that we're gonna move into is a little bit more advanced. This is messing around with some of the gimbal settings and the movement of the drone. So it might be best if you take the drone out, fly it a little bit first, make sure you kind of get a feel of how the drone operates, the speed that it operates in all three of the modes, and just kind of get a feel so you can kind of go in and fine tune these. But essentially, Typically with these types of drone, people are using them to shoot cinematic shots or get some really cool footage. And you can change the way the drone moves depending on the type of mode that you're again or that you're in. Again, you've got cinematic, which is really smooth. You've got normal, which is kind of an in-between. And then of course you've got sport mode, which is basically as fast as the drone can go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna again tap on the three dots up in the top right hand corner. This time we're gonna go to the control tab. And the first thing that I like to do is allow upward gimbal rotation. What this allows you to do is tilt the camera up about 20 degrees. Now having gimbal rotation all the way up and having the gimbal up to 20 degrees, if you're flying in sport mode, you might get some jumpiness on the gimbal because the aircraft body has to move forward or tilt forward and they do this in order for the drone's body not to be in the shot. So again, it works best when you're using it in the normal mode or a cinematic mode where your angle of attack on your drone isn't as heavy, but I like to have that just so I have those extra levels of uh, degrees if I want to tilt the camera up. So enough of that, if we go into the advanced gimbal settings, this is kind of where your user preference is going to be. This is going to be how you're going to get a feel of the drone and make your uh, adjustments accordingly. So for myself, I like to have my normal kind of in between my sport and my cinematic. I like to have my pitch speed, which is basically how fast the gimbal will, will pitch the camera up or down. You can see that it's measured in degrees per second. Now I like to have this about 25 because you can always go slow with the wheel over there on the back side of the controller. So having kind of a mid area 
works perfect for me and I can kind of just kind of fine tune it with that wheel. Now you can see the pitch smoothness. This is how far or how long it takes for the pitch. I guess um, this is pitch. How long the pitch takes for it to stop after you've released the wheel. Again, I like to have mine fairly snappy in normal mode because um, I do like to have a little bit of smoothness, but it doesn't need as much as if I were to be shooting in a cinematic mode and it doesn't need to be as snappy as if I were shooting in a sport mode. So I've got the pitch speed at 25% and then I've got the pitch smoothness at about 13%. Yaw rotation speed, this is the basically the left and right spin of the aircraft that you can again measure in degrees per second. I have mine sitting at about 69% right there, so oops, 65. Again, you can mess around with this and of course that's all controlled with your left uh, joystick right there assuming that you're using the default mode too and you can kind of fine tune that to where you want it. Yaw smooth this is the same thing but with the rotation of the aircraft so if you want to release the stick and have it continue you're going to want to increase your smoothness up versus if you want it to stop as soon as you let go of the stick you're going to want to reduce that smoothness on the yaw. As far as sport mode, you can have things pretty snappy. Again, all of this is relative to the control input and the uh, wheel input on the back here. I don't typically shoot a lot of stuff in sport mode just because I'm not doing a lot of things that require the movement, uh, the fast movement of the aircraft like that. So again, same settings. You got your pitch speed, you got your pitch smoothness, yaw rotation speed and yaw smoothness. You can see that I have the pitch speed at 50 degrees. I've got the pitch smoothness. That was actually supposed to be down probably around five to 10 as I believe I, is what I had it at. And then I have my yaw rotation speed at 130 degrees and my yaw smoothness at 10. So it has a little bit of smoothness to it, but not a crazy amount. Scrolling down a little bit further, this is where I shoot most of my footage in is the CineSmooth mode or the uh, tripod on some uh, drones is what they call it. But you can see that I have my pitch speed at 10 degrees per second. So nice and slow, nice and easy. I have my pitch smoothness at 20, which allows me as soon as I release that tilt, then it's going to continue to move or to continue to tilt that camera, resulting in some really smooth uh, shots. Now, if I do the yaw rotation, I have that about 30 degrees, and then I have my yaw smooth this at 20 as well. So you can kind of see if we switch between the two on the background here, that we're currently in cinematic mode. And if I spin, you can see that as soon as I let go, it's nice and easy if I go to the right. Now this is, I'm pushing the joystick all the way to the right and you can see that it's a nice smooth rotation with a nice roll off when it comes to yaw. Same thing with the pitch, if I were to pitch upward, really nice and smooth, pitch downward, I've released, and you can see that it has a nice roll off with the pitch as well, versus if I go into normal, you can see it's much snappier but still has some, ro or still has some drop off. Same thing with the tilt, like that, because you can always cut out what you don't need in post, and then of course sport is very quick, very snappy with a very, very slight roll off. You can see that it moves very quickly. So again, I like having these kind of as a template. You've got your cinematic for nice smooth, you got sport for fast, and you've got your normal for in between. And again, all of that is relative to how fast you're moving the wheel left or right as well as the joystick. So those are just a few settings that I prefer on my drone. That's how I like to have my settings set up for me to get the shots that I want to do. Yours, of course, might be something different, but I would encourage you to go in and uh, play around with those and see what you like. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Hopefully, I was able to give you guys kind of some insight as to what these settings are, especially if you're new to drone flying, and hopefully give you something that you can start off of. And uh, I like to look at these as kind of like a preset that you can kind of easily flip through to kind of match your flying style or match the scene that you're shooting and kind of make some minor tweaks from there. Anyways, that is all I've got. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, and of course subscribe. If you like what you see on this channel, we'd love to have you as part of the Help Cloud community. We've got tons of merch lined up over at shop.helpcloud.com. If you want to support us in other ways, head on over there to check that out. Thank you guys all again for watching and your support, and we will see you on the next one. Peace. <gasps>